Hi, I'm Chris. Have you ever considered how animals find water in the desert? Here in the Mojave Desert in the western USA, researcher Dylan Tennant is studying the master of desert survival, the kangaroo rat. So this is, this is definitely the desert kangaroo rat. So come on then, what is it? A kangaroo or a rat? It's neither actually. It's not a kangaroo or a rat. It's not part of the kangaroo family. It's not a marsupial. And it's also not just your generic rat. They're actually part of a family called Heteromyidae, which is a family of desert dwelling rodents that share some characteristics such as the large auditory bullae and the cheek pouches that they can use to store food. So this one looks like it's slightly different. Is this, is this a different species we've got? This is the Merriam's kangaroo rat. These are a little bit smaller and they're a little bit darker in color. But what's really cool about them is that they're a lot more adapted to all the deserts. They're found in the Chihuahuan Desert, in the Sonoran Desert, in this desert. So let's talk about those adaptations to the desert then. I mean, what's, what's so special about these things that, that make them thrive in these hot, arid environments? One of the first ones is that they actually don't have to drink water very often. Um, they get a lot of the water they need from the seeds they eat. They're really specialized to retain water. So they have actually a really cool kidney. They have a really long loop of Henle, which is something that all our kidneys have. But the kangaroo rat has one of the longest loop of Henleys. And this is the area in the kidney that's responsible for water reabsorption. So they're not letting any drop go to waste. So physiologically, obviously, they've, they've got some amazing adaptations. What about kind of behaviorally? What they've done is they've adapted their lifestyle to be nocturnal and be only active at night and also to burrow during the day. That way they have some more cool underground that's not going to be exposed to the sun to spend the hot hours of the day. So perfectly adapted um, to a lack of water, but what about food? So kangaroo rats are granivorous, which means they eat seeds. And they have these cheek pouches right on the sides of their mouth. And that's a way where while they're foraging, they can eat some, but also store some. So they can fill those full of seeds, take them back to their burrow. And that's really important for the desert because it's always good to be able to get through a certain dry area and have food kind of on reserve and further ready. They're the perfect desert animal in my opinion. <laughs> Up close with one of Dylan's trapped kangaroo rats, we can really see these modifications that make this animal perfect for desert living. You can see the huge, really long hind legs that allow it to hop between the islands of vegetation really, really fast, and the long tail that allows it to balance as it does that. We've also been watching it eat some seeds, and what it has, it has fur-lined pouches in its mouth. And the reason they are fur-lined is that we think that that stops the animal losing any moisture to the seeds. And of course that's potentially disastrous for a desert animal. And what we can also see up close are the adaptations to the sensory organs. So we can see the huge eyes which allow it to see in the dark and the long whiskers which also help it in the dark to feel around and to sense things that are coming from the side. And the large, large ears because this thing has incredible hearing. And in fact I've got a skull here. And this might look like a normal rodent skull except for these huge kind of white things at the back. And they're the auditory bullet. And what that allows is for this creature to have incredible hearing, especially in the low ranges. And what it does is it uses its rear feet to communicate and to scare off things like snakes, but it also can hear the wing beat of an owl just by using this, this incredible auditory sense. Look at that skull. So surviving in an environment with almost no water is easy for these guys with their superb adaptations. And they're also impossibly cute but they do have a slightly stupid name. I mean, kangaroo rat, they're neither of those. Anyway, subscribe and I'll see you next time on Earth Unplugged. Now, what do you call something that looks like a guinea pig, but is related to an elephant? A rock hyrax, of course. And it appears that these strange mountain dwelling creatures may hold the secret to understanding thousands of years of climate change. Living on rocky outcrops in Africa and Asia, these creatures don't stray far from their burrows. And as generations of rock hyrax have lived in the same place, their urine has built up around the burrows, forming a kind of crust. 